Hello everyone, Elrond here with part 9 of my Minecraft 1, 2, 3. So I'm continuing to expand the boundaries of the uh, sheep pit. And this sheep is bouncing quite a bit. So this is where I deepen it uh, to the fourth layer. And <clears throat> uh, you'll probably remember this from a previous video, but... When we get to the end, we're going to have those holes. Yep, those holes are still there. So, to cover them for now, take care of the rest of this stuff inside here, and then I'll do the sensible thing and cut myself a tiny little hole and jump right in. Um, it looks relatively safe. There's probably no creeper in here. Luckily, I might. Uh, if there was a creeper in here, that would be quite depressing. So, I'm going to block all that off and then look for my escape route. But, just to make things a little safer, I'm going to place some torches. So that creepers won't spawn down here out of nowhere. And whatnot. So I believe the way it works is um, creepers won't despawn in the light, but they won't s spawn in light either. All right. So now we jump back down, and this is no longer a problem. And we're going to make our ladder. And then, as I've spoiled before, I'm going to pull the hay out, and these guys get horny and want to climb the ladder. Which, of course, is problematic. I don't want them climbing my ladder. So, I have to construct Plan B. And Plan B is quite simple. We're just going to um, make a little... Um, little border here and then we're going to uh, put a trapdoor lid on it that way nobody can climb the ladder but I don't happen to have a trapdoor on me right now so instead I'm going to cut down the two portions of the ladder that is necessary to actually jump so that I can leave these sheep without worry of them jailbreaking. And then come over and get my trapdoor. And for good measure, I make myself another bucket and some shears. And with shears, I can officially harvest wool, which is our reason for having sheeps in the first place. And why am I being a moron? I need to place one of those. There we go. Okay, come on. Aim a little higher. No. You gotta aim higher, dumbass. Oh, great. Now I'm heckling myself. Ugh. Just wait until the heckler comes in. Ugh. I'm gonna stand no chance. I have to deal with the heckler and myself heckling. Well, in any case, we can now shear these guys and take their wool. And that should give us enough wool. Actually, no, it won't. And I keep forgetting that I need to right-click to do the special properties. Instead of swinging or punching or whatever. And I forget to put the ladder. Come on, put the ladder. You can't leave without the ladder. There you go. And then put the lid on properly this time. There you go. And now it's getting dark, so get lost. Why? Ugh. Things are not going to be fun once the hackler actually arrives. Um, but in any case, we now have uh, two wall. We need one more white wall to uh, make a bed. And I, it's possible that maybe uh, I can mix the wall the colors together to make a bed, but I didn't think it was possible at the time, so I didn't bother trying. Um, in any case, we're going to come back down here. And let's see. Ah, yes. So I take the bucket. 
and I finally do the proof that all of this water here is coming from one source. So you saw how we couldn't pick anything up there. Now if we pick up from here, all the water's gone. So water physics works very weirdly in Minecraft. Basically, one source block is where the water flows from, and then, you know, gravity and whatnot um, does its thing. And you can only claim water from the source square. Uh, same applies for lava. Although lava still behaves a little differently from water. Um, the easy thing to know um, is that the, um, the lava will flow more slowly than water will. Um, or maybe I'm just mixing that up with terraria. Um, I think both do that. Um, but uh, water can be duplicated infinitely, while lava cannot. Um, if you have th a, um, a trough that's uh, three by one, and you place water on the two sides, you can draw water from that middle point forever, and those two sides will basically replenish that middle spot for all eternity. Because the way it works out is the, um, the two sides are both providing essentially a half a, black, um, half a block worth of water to the center, and um, one half plus one half equals one. Uh, believe it or not. And so, because of that, you can harvest a full block of water from the center. And then because it wasn't a source, um, the two source sides will refill that section because you haven't tampered with any of the sources. Now, lava does not do this. Lava... It... It's kind of interesting. Basically, it it's more obedient to um, the traditional concept of conservation of matter, uh, such that you can't generate lava out of thin air. Um, it has to actually come from somewhere. So basically, um, each square of lava is a defined, fixed uh, existence. And so when you harvest a block of lava, you are actually harvesting it in its entirety. Um, and all the side flows that are interconnected with it essentially die with it. So you don't get these interesting fractions that um, add up. So, realistically speaking, if you want to harvest um, a bunch of obsidian, then you're going to need to find a lot of lava. Um, now, lucky you, there is... Uh, well, there's multiple metric shit tons of uh, lava in the netherworld. I know that you can't dump water into the netherworld, but you might be able to extract lava with buckets. I forget if that's allowed or not. But assuming that it is allowed, there's going to be far more lava than you could ever be possibly think to do anything with. Um, even if you're going to make a tower of obsidian that goes from top bedrock all the way up to the um, sky building limit. Um, there probably is more than enough lava to accommodate that, uh, even with a decently wide tower. Um, that will be it for this video. I will see you next video.